Hey guys, it's Super FBV here, back at it with another video. And before we start with this one, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more content just like this. And let's get on into it. So today's video is all about this little guy right here. This is the Foxier T Rex Micro, and this thing is an absolute beast. Uh, it's got a huge sensor. It's great. You you can probably watch like legitimate reviews about this thing, and people will tell you this thing is amazing. Arguably one of the best analog FPV cameras that you can get, but Today's video is not necessarily 100% about this thing, but more about whether or not you should spend $45 on an FPV camera or more. Uh, or if you should spend uh, between, you know, $16 to $30. So that's going to be our um, topic of discussion today. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. So a little bit about this camera for those people who don't know much about this one. Uh, it is a Foxier T-Rex Micro, uh, arguably one of the best cameras that you can get out there for analog, like I said. Um, it's got a 5 megapixel CMOS sensor. Uh, it's natively 16 by 9, but you can uh, switch it to 4 by 3 if you want with a little bit of a crop, which I do. Uh, you can switch between PAL and NTSC. Uh, it's got 1500 TV lines, which in my opinion is kind of like the 1440p of, uh, of analog, you know, even though analog is doesn't even come close to 1440p, but uh, it's got a really high resolution on there. That's why 1500 TV lines, the more TV lines, the more resolution. So that's just a rule of thumb. Uh, it's got uh, on four by three mode, the FOV is uh, about 120 degrees to 150 degrees. So 120 and 150 degrees. Uh, and by, on 16 by nine mode, it's 155 up and down and 175 this way. Um, which is which is great. It's got a very wide field of view, uh, auto shutter speed, uh, and obviously an analog signal. Uh, it says up on the website it says up to two millisecond input latency, or like as low as two millisecond input latency. Uh, with other people's testings, it's actually like around six milliseconds, which is really great. You know, pretty low latency. Um, and uh, it's got all the the normal hodgepodge stuff. You know, like uh, white auto white balance and and all that and uh, you know it's got a great dynamic range um, and uh, that's that's about it so um, that's enough of this uh, let's get on to the main topic at hand so this uh, this beast being our premium camera what am I going to compare this against uh, this this is the Foxier Aero Micro Pro uh, it's a 600 TV line CCD sensor camera and it's uh, it's pretty good for the value it's only twenty dollars versus forty five dollars uh, and it's a great bang for the buck uh, honestly the cheapest that I would say uh, you should go for an FPV camera and it's on my budget basher uh, I will make a video on the budget basher build it's upcoming uh, it just takes me a while to actually make the video on this so if you want uh, to see a video on this uh, this budget basher uh, quad uh, stay subscribed and uh, that'll be coming your way soon but um, what is this camera let me go through the specs on this camera it is a 600 TV line camera uh, I've got it in the 1.8 millimeter version uh, you can get it in the 2.1 millimeter version as well um, I just wanted the extra uh, wide angle it's got a 125 field, a degree field of view this way and 160 degree field of view that way um, it's native 4 by 3 but can be switched to 4, uh, 16 by 9 if you want uh, it's also NTSC slash PAL switchable um, and it's got auto white balance and all that and auto shutter speed and all that and uh, it's got that Foxier quality uh, and that's why I'm comparing Foxier to Foxier because I am a huge Foxier fan um, that might make me a little biased but I think they're offering two great options right here in front of me uh, for two different price points $45 and $20 now uh, for comparison's sake, I'm trying to keep all the footage that I'm showing to be very similar in quality. Uh, so forgive me if they're not like super perfect because I do have to have two different drones. I don't have like a professional setup where I can put them in side by side and uh, emit the video and everything. I'm just some I'm just your local neighborhood uh, FPV YouTube guy. So <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so uh, get let, let me get on to my testing and then I'll. Uh, I'll uh, explain to you what the main difference is and then, you know, conclude and everything. So I'm going to let a few of the clips play through uh, side by side and I'm going to let you decide which one you like the most. I'm not going to put a label on either of them for a little bit and I want you to comment down below which one you actually like the most, whether it's the right one or the left one. And then in a little bit, I'll tell you which one uh, is which. The comparison price wise, that's a whole 
whole twenty-five dollars difference. Uh, you can do a lot with the twenty-five dollars uh, when you're when you're building like a budget drone or like a mid uh, uh, mid-tier drone. Um, and that's why that's why uh, this argument exists whether or not you should buy something of a higher quality like this uh, or a higher price point like this or something cheaper like the twenty dollar uh, camera that I just showed you. So here it is. I'm gonna tell you which one's which. Obviously, I'm pretty sure a majority of you guys would have guessed it. The one on the right is the Foxier T-Rex Micro, and the one on the left is the Foxier Aero Micro. Uh, the one on the left being the cheaper one, and the one on the right being the, the more expensive one. And the word cheap isn't a negative thing at all in this case. As you can see on the one on the left, it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's got that CCD sensor, uh, so like Jello is kind of uh, like, you know, not visible uh, as much as like on a CMOS sensor. Um, the picture is pretty great. It's, it is a little darker. Uh, there's not that much detail as you can see, uh, considering the fact that uh, the um, the Foxier Aero Micro only has 600 TV lines versus the Foxier T-Rex Micro has uh, 1,500 TV lines and it's five megapixels versus I believe two. So another caveat of having a more expensive camera like this one, is the lower latency. This thing is at six milliseconds versus the other one is at 22, I believe. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe it's 22. And six versus 22, that's a significant difference. That's the main difference I upgraded from FR Sky XM Plus to Tracer, like I like I did before in a previous video. Um, and this is the same reason um, I you, you could uh, uh, suggest yourself to um, upgrade to a more expensive camera like this. So you can see from the video quality, uh, that this thing is far nicer. The video is much crispier. The video is nicer. The video is more colorful um, uh, And it's just overall better. It's it's just it's just got an aura of betterness <laughs> I guess that's so way one way to explain it But um now whether or not that word better is worth $45 is up to you uh, and I solely think it's based on use case and use scenario uh, for most freestyle pilots they would say probably not but for those freestyle pilots who want to um, be able to see those little scraggles and uh, you know, little nuances in the environment so you won't crash as often, it may be worth it. Like for me, I thought it was worth it because of the, you know, I wanted to be able to see every little detail in the environment uh, so that I can reduce the risk of crashing. Now, if you're a cinematic pilot uh, or you're flying Cinewhoops or 7-inch long-range cruisers, this is also worth it for you most likely because you have a less risk of crashing and breaking this camera uh, and having to replace $45 worth of camera. Um, and uh, you also get to see a much more clear and beautiful picture. Um, and, uh, and, you know, for racing, probably not worth it. But for freestyle and cinematic or long range uh, flying, possibly worth it. Uh, in my opinion, but um, if you're if you're racing or if you're like in super high risk freestyle environments, then the other one might be worth it because even though you're getting less of a video quality or less of an image quality, you're getting twenty dollars uh, of camera. You actually you're getting more than twenty dollars with the camera because arguably that camera is worth should be worth more than twenty dollars because of how like how how nice it is. Like it's a nice camera. Uh, you're seeing like like. Like, you know, you're, just, you're not getting as much detail as this one, but it is a great CCD sensor. Uh, it's a great CCD camera. Uh, and uh, and yeah, um, for most racers and freestylers who, who have risks of breaking their, their quad, something like that would be very worth it to them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like everything uh, comes down to whether or not uh, you, uh, you're going to be using it for um, something that's high risk or not. That's what I feel like is worth uh, is where the argument li uh, lies. For forty five dollars, yes, this is worth it in my opinion because the video quality that you get seems to be uh, the best that I've seen so far uh, on the internet and personally. But this that number forty five dollars might be a lot for a lot of people. Uh, that is like almost half uh, a quad to some people. Uh, so forty five dollars for everyone probably not worth it. $45 for me, it was worth it enough for me to buy it and put it on my freestyle quad. Um, and uh, $20, yeah, it was worth it for me to put it on my budget quad. Uh, one that I uh, have a higher risk of breaking and trying new tricks on. Yes, I put it on that one. Um, so it really all comes down to whether or not you're uh, uh, comfortable with potentially losing a $45 camera on your more aggressive quad or if you don't want or if you're, if you're going to be putting this on a quad that's much lower risk of crashing, 
Um, and uh, if you have a lot of money in deep pockets, then you can put this on every quad if you want. Because I, th this camera is great. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say it, but this camera is great. Um, and I'm kind of going around in circles with my uh, with my words right now. But I, that's really all I can say. All I can say is that your use case determines whether or not a $45 camera is worth it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So to conclude the video, um, yeah, it's worth it. I've said that many times. It's a great camera. Um, for $45, you have to make that decision whether or not it's worth it for your specific use case. And the word worth it depends on the individual and the use case. Um, and uh, for I have both. And I see it worth it for uh, a more relaxed freestyle quad. This one being worth it for a more relaxed freestyle quad. And the other one being worth it for a more risky, high-risk quad. Like my budget build where I'm not afraid to crash it that often. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, uh, leave a comment, and subscribe. And for my autofocus to come and focus. And uh, yeah, if you want to buy either of these, there are links in the description. Uh, and uh, yeah. Enjoy. Have a good day.